Welcome to Small Biz Flash, where owners and managers get their briefing on small business news, trends, and insights to make better decisions and increase their business's value. I'm your host, Adam Hewitt. Thanks for joining me. On today's show, we continue our multi-part series titled Surviving the Economic Downturn by focusing on how to boost cash reserves with some accounts payable strategies. That's coming up right after the news roundup. All right, let's dive in. There's a mixed bag on the economic front this week, depending on how you view things. First, the sort of good news. Retail sales surged last month 1.3%, exceeding forecasters' expectations. It was the stoutest showing since February as consumers came roaring back after a flat September. However, if you can call that the silver lining, there is definitely a storm cloud. It appears consumers are fueling their spending with record levels of debt. A new report out by the Federal Reserve Bank of New York shows an increase in total household debt in the third quarter of 2.2% to an all-time high of $16.5 trillion. Balances now stand $2.4 trillion higher than at the end of 2019 before the pandemic recession. Credit card balances also increased by 15% year-over-year, representing the largest jump in more than 20 years. The National Small Business Association is filing a lawsuit challenging the constitutionality of the Corporate Transparency Act of 2019, also known as Beneficial Ownership Rules. You may recall back in October, I reported that tens of millions of small companies will be required to hand over details about their ownership to U.S. Treasury Department officials under the law, which goes into effect in 2025. The federal government argues the law is needed to prevent money laundering, but the lawsuit argues that while the law's goals are noble, its mechanisms are ill-conceived. You can find out more information on this and the other stories in the News Roundup by going to the links in the show notes. Many small businesses head into the all-important Christmas shopping season in a precarious position. A new study finds that 24% of small businesses reported their upcoming holiday sales will determine if their business can survive into next year. According to the report by American Express, 32% said cash flow is the top concern for them heading into the holiday season. Remember, this Saturday, November 26th, is Small Business Saturday, a day to celebrate and support small businesses and all they do for our communities. Don't forget to shop at local stores and eat at local restaurants on Saturday. Small business owners, your finances are the cornerstone of your business. You need the bookkeeping pros at SBS Accounting and Advisors to keep your AP, AR, and financial statements on track. For 16 years, the good folks at SBS have been helping owners like you make better decisions and grow their profits. Go to sbsaccountants.com today to set up a free 30-minute consultation. Use the promo code FLASH to get 20% off your setup fee. Again, that's sbsaccountants.com. Today we're talking about surviving the economic downturn by rethinking accounts payable. So with higher interest rates, um, because the Fed is raising interest rates to help fight inflation, and so that means that credit is now uh, more expensive, and sometimes it's cheaper to use your own cash than rely on outside credit. Um, But also just because the economy is not as good as it was, and with us thinking that perhaps it's going into worse places, um, cash flow is a higher priority. And so there are several things that you can do from an accounts payable standpoint to help boost your cash. Cash flow is something that is always of a concern, but sometimes small businesses get a little bit um, complacent when the economy is good and um, or maybe aren't as worried. And sometimes people don't even look at cash flow statements and things like that uh, whenever the economy is healthy. But right now we really need to be focused on that. So let's just go through quickly four things that you can be thinking about that can help you. Uh, And these are in the context of accounts payable. So first of all, 
Um, if you pay bills with ACH payments, you may want to consider um, where vendors would allow it that you pay those with credit cards. Now, sometimes that might not be possible, but if you can, um, that would do a couple of things. One, it would extend your credit cycle. Um, and now you have really 30 days to, to more to pay. And also you might get some sort of you know extra benefit if you've got um, some sort of perks on, on your credit card. So that's just low hanging fruit. If you haven't um, gone through all your bills to see what you could do that way, um, that's something to consider. Another thing that you could do is put approval processes in place for purchases over a certain amount. That may be something you have, but maybe not. Um, here's the, the main thing there though, is if it is a manual process that you have right now, you need to invest in some sort of software so that you automate that and you have perhaps different workflows for different kinds of purchases and different price amounts or whatever the case may be. But once you automate it, um, it becomes incredibly efficient and that can help control some of your costs as well. Now, as far as dealing with vendors, uh, you want to be really clear and um, communicate frequently with your suppliers because you need them, they need you, and we're all in this together. And you want to come at this with a win-win posture, okay? But if you're paying vendors uh, perhaps early, you may want to consider not doing that. Uh, but also kind of consider on the flip side of the coin, you want to maintain good relationships. So you have to kind of take the totality of the situation here into account, but perhaps consider suspending early payments. And just because the invoice comes in doesn't mean that, you know, you have to pay the bill. Uh, the exception here would be if you get a discount for early payment, then of course it may be worth continuing to pay early. But there's an, uh, a metric, an accounts payable metric called discounts captured versus offered. And if this is not a metric that you track, you may want to start tracking it because there may be sometimes when there are discounts that are offered that you may not even be getting depending on how well your accounts payable are managed. So um, that's something to think about as well. You could also negotiate payment terms for longer periods with vendors if possible. Um, look, vendors know that the economy, um, at least we think, is, is going in a bad direction and everybody's kind of nervous. And so um, sometimes you just have to ask. And so if you go to your vendors and you say, you know, particularly the ones that you have good relationships with, you may just want to say, I need a longer payment term for this particular, um, you know, time of the year or for, for whatever it is. And they might say, okay, you also might consider um, talking to some of your vendors about if you buy in larger quantities or if you ex want to extend the term of the contract, if they'll give you a discount and then they may very well say yes. And the last thing is financing your accounts payable. Certain vendors will finance um, their contracts. And so what you might be able to, not all, but some, depending on your credit worthiness, um, will allow you to finance your purchases. And this, these kind of vary in the, the way they look. Um, some could even take the form of extensions of your pending payments. So you just kind of have to ask and do some investigating because it will vary from vendor to vendor. And not all vendors do it, but some will. So cash flow management involves more than just accounts payable, obviously. And we're going to talk more about this in future episodes as we continue to dive into surviving the economic downturn. So we look forward to having you back then. Thanks for listening to Small Biz Flash. I'm your host, Adam Hewitt. If you enjoy the show, please help me expand its reach by telling one other person about the podcast. I sure do appreciate it, and I'll see you next week.